So the conditions are near perfect, it's somewhat chilly. Uh, the stage is set, lots of French fans here who have been making themselves heard. But it is a home match from a Scottish point of view, a very welcome home match. And an impressive home record. There's Leon Boxes, looks comfortable, looks happy at the moment, but a very different type of game that they're expected to play with Boxes. You know he's going to try and kick and control, Chris. Yeah, he's got a huge boot on him, and he will look to kick. I think he'll kick contestables as well to try and get this big forward pack led by that man, Garado, into the game. John Lacey will have his work cut out. The French will like to contest a breakdown. So the final game of the second weekend underway. The message has been clear from Scotland. They will continue to try and play a creative, high-paced game, just with a few, a fewer errors and a bit more direction. Hamish Watson was one of the ball carriers last week, but you can hear the French fans. And immediately away from Scotland, Maitland, no way round uh, Teddy Thomas, try scorer in Paris, but Maitland still scrabbling on. And the upending of uh, Johnny Gray, Laidlaw and Russell. High and watched and uh, taken well by Palis, the uh, fullback, but Hugh Jones gets to him. It's an opportunity, and immediately Verimi Vakatawa, he will try and punch some holes in the Scottish defence today. And the centres, uh, Girado goes wide to uh, Teddy Toma, and good hands from Toma into Lamara. And Lamara just gets it back to Teddy Toma. And there's Machino again. Good defensive work by McAnally, but smuggled back to Machino and then hit at pace. And it's good work by Dumeru. And the La Rochelle centre taking his chance well in the opening moments. A bit of power from Camara is set back. Turnover is good. And turnover is good, says John Lee, but then lost. And France get a an opportunity once more. Contest on the ball, but... France have it once more, and Machineau gives it on to Yakuba Kamara, the Montpellier flanker. And here come the French fans once again. Paris. Paris trying to find a way past Laidlaw and into the Scottish half. Come Les Bleus, Slimani just about lost it, but still with France and still they come. Kamara bounces off one and two and rolling forward. Once more, Dumeru on the pass. Eventually wins its way to Teddy Toma and slips past Finn Russell. And Teddy Toma away once again. And Toma is doing it once more. Teddy Toma, deja vu at Murrayfield. Teddy Toma as he did in Paris, does again here in Edinburgh. And what a start for him and for France. An incredible start there. The ball was in play for two minutes, 22 seconds, and an almost identical try to last week from Teddy Thomas. His confidence seems to be high. I think he shrugged off Finn Russell on the wing um, and turned on the afterburners. A fantastic try, um, and he seems to be in good form now, Teddy Thomas. Well, of course, we're surprised, haven't they? The French, as Paul says, two and a half minutes of the ball in play, not kicked at all by the French, they kept it in hand, one or two turnovers, a bit scrappy at times, it was a bounce pass and Thomas had it all to do, he got on the outside of Finn Russell, he, he could have passed it here but he decided to take on Hogg, he had the power and the strength to get over for his seventh try, he's so electric with ball in hand and well we all thought the French would kick, they've come to play. But it happens so often, you've heard from the French camp, the talk about well, they've been letting messages slip out that yes, spoke this, it'll be a kicking game, it'll be this, it'll be one game plan and then uh, another. It did look as if Boxis was trying to kick and John Barkley got at him to stop him, but then the rest of the Scottish team have to react to that and shut it off. So conversion attempt for Maxime Machineau. Accompanied by La Marseillaise from the stands, and Machino sends it through. And uh, Scotland, well, they gave away a very early trying card of last week. They have done so again here at Murrayfield. But what a try from, what a finish from Teddy Toma. It is a good finish, isn't it, Paul? But there's one-on-one -on -one tackles missed there. And the, the bounce pass is very often the best pass in rugby. Yeah, it puts the defence on the heels. So Scotland will look for our response, but France already looking lively. Use it nine. 
Machino sends up the box kick. Wenceslas Lori, one of those chasing down for France, but taken well enough. Nickland gets to it and Barclay feeds Ryan Wilson. Leave it! Leave it! Leave Wilson trying to shift Slimani. And Bergen brought in for a bit of ball carrying. Hamish Watson again. Deceptively strong. Russell once more to Johnny Gray. Gordon Reed and Wilson lend a hand. And Russell again. And Hugh Jones spills in the contact. French ball again. French scrum. Big first scrum now for Simon Bergen. He hasn't played in six weeks following his suspension over Christmas. So um, this is a part of the game that was weak for Scotland, certainly towards the end of the game last week against the Wales. So this is a very, very big moment for the Scottish scrum. And I think if, if, if France sense weakness here, they could go after them all day. You look at the front rows in particular, and Slimani will be who's one of the best scrummagers in the world up against Gordon Reid. And you know, those are good scrummagers as well. And then uh, Jefferson Poirot against Bergen, but an injury for uh, Girado at the moment. Yeah, there's a bounce pass there, isn't it? From Dumaru. And it puts the defence on the on their heels. Teddy Thomas is first to react, he's so quick. And he gets that fend, and Finn Russell gets outside Peter Horn. And here, I think. His teammates would have been frustrated if he didn't make it, but he's got all the confidence of all his seventh tries, second in two weeks. That's what it means to him, celebrating. That's within two minutes. Scotland were looking for a good start. They were needing a good start after last weekend. But Terry Thomas and France have got that start. It takes the sting out of a home crowd as well, doesn't it, when you're a travelling side and you can silence the, the spectators. So first scrum, and it is, a, as Paul said, a big, big moment because France should have the upper hand in this department. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, leave it to me. Crouch! Bind! Set, steady. Mashin are not happy, and John Lacey will let them do it again. I need, I need your height up. Okay, bind us, okay? Height, please. He's a tall prop, uh, Simon Bergen. His scrummaging is not, not his forte. He's getting better, though. Richard Cockrell has talked about that at Edinburgh. And coming back from Fine. that. Six week ban. And up against Jefferson Poirot. Bind! Set. Penalty to France is the result of the first scrum. One on your knee. Back slaps all round. Three, I want you higher as well. Very hard to, to see from here. Um, I can hear Johnny Lacey saying uh, Gordon Reed was on his knee. He went down to his knee very early there. So it's very hard to tell from that scrum yet, but it. It's still a very important moment, and uh, this is one place where forwards can influence territory in the game. If you give away penalties in the scrum White, back, or at the rook as a forward, you're 40, 50 yards down the field, Captain, and you've a set piece to defend, and you're the French now running at the Scottish. So on the 10 metre line, the Scottish 10 metre line, Girado, and it's set back beautifully. And a chance for uh, Remy Lamara to carry for a moment, and then uh, Jefferson Poirot. And France with a direct approach here. Machino takes it in the little loop around and Boxy's kick half charge down. And Scotland secure possession. Try and get some go forward. Bergen playing over the top of that to set it back. Gray and Gilchrist and Hamish Watson. A penalty to France, though, so Scotland yielding possession again. Familiar tale for those who watched last week. Yeah, is it sealing off? Six arriving player on the ball. Yeah, good poach by the French. It's amazing to see Six the French arriving. take the line out off the top and into the middle of the field, and they just put all their forwards around the ball and looked, yeah, just Laurie. latched on as a poach Captain? there. Yeah, it's Wenceslas Laurie, isn't it? He gets in first, he gets just, on the ball. Just on the strum. Both teams strong. are transferring weight. Both teams. Okay, yeah, you yeah, must yeah. hold on the next drum, okay? Yeah, Rabba Slimani is not looking uh, at all good at the moment. If, if you're happy, but no pre-engage. Same for them. They transfer weight as well. 
What does he mean by transfer rate? It's John Lacey having a word with the, the two front rows, Paul, on about transfer rate. That man's yeah, key, okay. Slamani, but is he just setting his stall out so early on because the first scrum was a penalty? Just underlining the decision. Yeah, look, it's a very hard part of the game to ref, um, and I think I know Johnny Lacey. He's, he's a, he used to play for Munster. He lives very near me. He, he he does a lot of work on refereeing the scrum. He referees Munster's training a lot. He referees Irish training a lot. Machino then, second kick at goal. Ideal start for France, 10 points within 10 minutes here at Murrayfield. And Scotland looking to put right the wrongs of last week, but so far, all France. Well, just the penalties, isn't it? As, uh, as Paul said, it was the penalty from the scrum that allowed France to get the field position. Scotland turned the ball over, then penalised again. And two minutes later, you've conceded three points, and it's 10-0 already to the visitors. Carry by Polenia for France. Still in, still in. No, yes, yeah, yes. And up it goes from Maxime Machino. And uh, Yukuba Kamara almost got to it, but a little knock forward, so Scotland will Plus have the scrum. These so. aerial battles now are so important. We saw them yesterday in uh, Twickenham also. Um, Just a lot of teams drum, now exit with the box kick, the winger chases, so you, you really need. A solid winger, solid fullback under those high balls. They're, they're like the fourth set piece now in the game. And that channel here, the wind can be very, very bad. That east stand side it just holds up. It comes back towards you, almost blows the ball back in the field. But, and Kamara as well, the number seven, the French number seven, so athletic, so good in the air. Put Scotland under pressure, but unfortunately, we have no goal. Scrum under scrutiny. John Lacey, the referee, Nigel Owens on the touch. Scotland. Holding firm for a moment, but then in a bit of trouble. But away it comes through Wilson and Laidlaw and Horn. And deep it goes now to Russell. And out wide, and a chance now for Scotland. And it's Hogg with a poke through and chasing it down is Tommy Seymour. Teddy Toma plays a bit of football. And uh, whacks it into the West Stand. Try scorer and covering, last man covering there for France. Excellent kick by Hogg. Perfectly weighted, makes France put it out. And Scotland's uh, mall now five metres out, and this is a real, real try scoring opportunity. It was a good play from Scotland, wasn't to apply the pressure because the scrum had actually skewed the wrong way. But that's a space that Sam Warburton was on early on, space on the edge to attack against France. So the line out against Wales did not go well. McNally to Gilchrist in the side today. He's the line out caller, and now the whole of Murrayfield calls for a drive. Not going anywhere at the moment. Laidlaw points. Yes. Shows the referee what to look at as Scotland try and they make their way to the line now. But where is the ball? It's still back at source. Everyone lost for a moment. The ball back at the feet of Gordon Reid. Carries himself with Barkley and Bergen. Scotland have to try and come again. The French defence in the starting blocks and Gilchrist. Sets it back now for Laidlaw and Johnny Gray. Laidlaw looks. And forward through comes Uturia. Good counter rucking by France, but Watson gets it out to Hogg now. And Hogg a bit of space to run around and try and step his way through the heavy traffic into Kamara. Johnny Gray bounces off one man. Machino felt that. Gilchrist now out wide. He goes Russell, gives the pass, and it's Maitland for the try. Scotland working well, Maitland finishes it, and Scotland hit back at Murrayfield. The fantastic carry from Johnny Gray, he just gets outside the defender, knocks the first defender, gets outside the second one, offloads to Gilchrist, um, who puts Finn Russell away, who puts Maitland away. Fantastic try, and I think it's just very sensible play by Scotland, not to scrum, to get themselves into a corner here. Five metre drive, they don't score off the, off the drive, but they hang on to the ball, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, this is the end of it. There's a big carry there from Johnny Gray. Gets his hands free. This pass from Grant Kilchrist allows the space to be attacked on the outside. Finn Russell delivers the last pass. Here's another look at the carry. It's Machino, the smallest guy in the field. He's a tough little number nine, but the second row for Scotland free the ball to the edge. Sean Maitland goes over, and it was a patient build-up after that initial line-out drive that was well defended by the French. But Sean Maitland keeps his width and scores in that left corner.
In for Byron McGuigan at a hamstring injury at France match and Maitland. He's got a few tries for Scotland now. This is seventh. Right in the corner, so tough kick and the man taking the kicks today is Greg Laidlaw. Oh, he's done well, very well indeed. What a kick from Greg Laidlaw. It looks a little bit tired as it reached halfway, but uh, it made it. And for that angle, that is a wonderful conversion. It is, it is. It's a really strong wind in that far corner. Here's a try again. Gilchrist shifting the ball on as Dumaru, he's committed. He shifts it on, probably expecting the second row to carry. And another look at that conversion. It just made it over. But it's an extra two points for Scotland. Good hit back. Bugsy's length on the restart and taken down by Russell and Hawks kick his charge down big in goal area here so Scotland have to get back but the ball dead Hogg was ready to send that one the length of the pitch but good charge down both kickers have been caught by Finn Russell as we have a look at the charge in Laurie <laughs> charged in the shins okay, you don't okay. often see that must have been a low one for, from Stuart Hogg but Sorry. you don't really want your number 10 catching yeah. those kickoffs you want him back, in the game back, the 22 restart and Russell Close. John, hold it. gives it height hold it. but a distance as well and Jeffrey Palis, the caster fullback, gathers it in. Ball there, one. And Buxis finds Sebastian Vahamahina, mountain on the move and Machino has it again and Buxis. Lamina tries backwards. to slip it away to Terry Tama. Backwards says uh, John Lacey. And uh, Lamina able to salvage it. Vamahina gets it away well. Boxis. Machino on to Remy Lamara again. And uh, Lamara keeping his hands free, thinking about the offload. Hands away! Teddy Toma. Oh, he's at it again, almost. But it was uh, Barkley and Bergen got to him. Sebastian Vamahina into Gilchrist. And the ball pings out sideways, and Scotland with a chance to counter. Watson. Hogg had to check and take the pass. And Hogg quickly taken down by Dumevo. And Barkley into Remy Lamara and uh, Marco Tolaigne. Horn to Bergen. And Simon Bergen feeds Gilchrist. And Gilchrist into Arthur Ituria. And Scotland creeping forward. McAnally and Hamish Watson. Well met by Guillaume Girardeau. Stop Russell. A low fizzer and Geoffrey Pallis with uh, time that's a good looking kick as well just stays in field though for Hogg and he sends it high and uh, Vakatawa takes it well powerful winger but decides to feed it on and then the pass from Marco Tolenia beyond Teddy Toma but an opportunity still for Remy Lamara Maxime Machino feeds Teddy Toma and out in the wing now that's a great charge by Uturia, but goes to Scottish hands. Again, the quick thinking by Machino in defence. Russell, long pass to Barkley and Hogg now, and Hogg just a little step, delays and then feeds Jones, is taken down by Vrimi Vakatawa. Leave it! No, no hands in here! Still on the Scotland side. And Gilchrist to the knees of Vamahina and Russell the kick half touched and goes to French hands and forward comes Geoffrey Palis more messy passage of play and Russell ambling back can't quite take it dead so has to try and play and Hogg he decides to kick this huge space back there and Vakatawa seems in no hurry all players tired now, they're breathing hard. And Virimi Vakatawa tries to find some speed, but he's taken down well. Look forward, And the ball there for Scotland to take, but 
It's a wrestle on the ground for possession. France still have it. Leave it! Leave it. Oh, he's in possession. Machino taking a quiet moment to himself. And gives it on, and uh, Poirot with a little rumble. Kamara. There's some players' hands on knees. It's been a tiring passage of play. And the French fans try and lift their side. Machineau sends it up. Russell coming forward for Scotland. Leaps and takes well. Attention from Bouxis. Laid on to Bergen. And a bit of thunder from him up over the 10 meter line and McAnally, but he's well taken by Slimani and Kamara. Back, tree, keep moving, Tree. This will test the fitness of both sides. Laidlaw sends it towards Jeffrey Pallis again. The fullback deals with it, steps around Johnny Gray. And France try and add some direction again. It's uh, Tulene. No, 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 no. And deeper it goes to Buxis now. Once again, it's uh, Russell fielding. A little hitch kick. And Teddy Toma gets to him. Penalty, though, to Scotland. Everyone can finally uh, rehydrate and gather, take stock proceedings. Similar penalty to the two John Barkley giveaway just after half time last week, where the French number four, Turia, put his hands on the floor before he got onto the poach. Um, but very long periods of play. And I think those long periods of play will probably suit the Scottish. I think they're fitter. Um, France made 253 tackles last week in the Irish game, which is a which is a Six Nations record. So there'll be a few tired bodies out there, and I think that pace of play, long periods of play, will suit will suit the will suit the Scottish, and they'll pick out uh, out a few tired French forwards eventually. Numbers, captain. Line out Scotland and McAnally. Again goes to Gilchrist. Gilchrist did so well to take it in one big paw and. Wide it goes now, Horn just reaching for that one. Hogg to the body of Russell and Maitland. Penalty, France will be the decision. Yeah, it's Dumeru, he gets over the ball and the outside channel and that's what France want you to do, they give you the space on the outside. With Sean Maitland did, he got, he got the possession behind the, the Scottish line. John Lacey's having one or two words with John Barkley. John Barkley trying to clear up what's happening at the breakdown, but France put massive pressure on at the breakdown. Forwards and backs, it was Dumeru that got over the ball there and won the penalty. See Scotland already conceded three. So, Buxis finds touch. Yeah. There's a little tackle by Fakatawa. And Dumeru is over it right away in a really strong position. Barkley, and I think it's Finn Russell, can't clear him out. Twice, open, three. Stop, stop. Again, that, that penalty, that turnover came within the first phase, quite similar to what happened a little bit for Scotland last week when they did have good set piece possession. I just think it tackles missed already, 10 missed by Scotland, two by France. France is just a bit more accurate, but the line out is stolen by Scotland, and Bergen tunnels his way up towards the 10 metre line. And Hamish Watson, again, one of the smallest forwards, but one of the strongest as well. A little wrecking ball. And Russell over the head of Vakatawa and out on the full from Finn Russell and a groan from the crowd. No one is more frustrated than Finn Russell himself. Yeah, it's, it's the right option, isn't it, Paul? It's just the execution let him down a wee bit of space there. Scotland they've been moving kind of backwards there, but similar to the, the penalty one, just before one. that. You can see in possession, no, you know, one or on two phases shot, yeah. after winning possession back, so it's difficult then to put pressure on the opposition. Plenty of his future harassing 92 teammates okay. in the uh, French side, Finn Russell heading there in the summer. Tolenia feeds Machino now in France, coming again at some pace in Boxes, out to Vakatawa. Vakatawa tries to heave his way past Hugh Jones, Maitland trying to strip him, but still back with France. Ball's available, nine. Use it! Machino being told to use it. So, ball is available. And uh, it's a healthy debate he's having with John Lacey. 
use it, he does eventually in Wenceslas Lori. And Mashinu and Buxis again, just delays the pass. Buxis just drops his head into the knees of Johnny Gray. And then a the little spill forward, and Scotland will have the scrum. Two knock-ons, no advantage. Buxis has taken a lot of contact. I think Scotland are trying to fly up on his outside to force him back in. And most of the, the kickings come from Mashinu or Police, 9 and 15. So Scotland are getting a lot of pressure on at Buxis. Yeah, Jacques Brunel knows him. He played under Brunel at Bordeaux briefly at Buxis. You think of the other uh, fly half options that uh, France have. He could have Tranduc or Jules Plisson, Remy Tales. But uh, Buxis getting the shout today. I think France's first phase attack looks quite good. It's, it's after that, it probably isn't that spectacular. And that's where Scotland can probably pressure France and put them under. And is that sometimes because they've not had a lot of time with the coach? You know, the first thing. The first phase is quite easy, it's building that phase attack there after. More time with the coach will probably help that, I think, Paul. Not many scrums so far in the game, uh, Scotland's ball, but they certainly felt the pressure on the last one. It's pretty solid this time, and a chance for Peter Horn to try and clear. Jeffrey Palis making his way across, and the kick is well placed. Palis now under the cosh, and Maitland and Hogg try and hold him up, and then move him towards touch. But Palis has done well with a bit of help. Yakuba Kamara into Gilchrist. Ball available, ball is available. And rolling forward, Lori picked up by Yakuba Kamara around Reed to Boxis and onto Tolenia. And France coming again through Vamayin and Slimani. Good handling, good play. Girado bounces into Bergen. And France into the Scottish half again. And Boxis. Good play to Tolenye. Rabas Slimani. Ambitious pass to Girado. The captain does well. And Mashino to Yakuba Kamara again. Wrestled to the floor by Johnny Gray. And Buxis gives it deep to Remy Lamara. Deeper still it goes to Dumeru and onwards to Palis and Teddy Toma once more. Toma the chip and the chase and three Frenchmen chasing it down. Laidlaw on it bounces for Teddy Toma. Sits up for the winger. Try number two for France. Teddy Toma once again. It was great work across by Craig Laidlaw to cover the chip. It just the horrible bounce of the rugby ball did him, unfortunately, and it's got all going Teddy Thomas' way. But I, I thought Scotland had that covered on the width. Um, and, and that's not the first time we saw that last week against Wales. When, yeah. they, when teams go wide against them, they seem to struggle at the moment. Yeah, and that man, Kamara, who just saw, set up that first stack, he was prominent, wasn't it? That's a good shot in the tackle by Bergen. When the ball's moved to that outside again, France are in total control because they've got space to attack. Stuart Hogg has to come up, and then it's just a foot race between Greg Laidlaw and Thomas. The cruelest of bounces. It's not even a bounce. It's the, the lack of bounce that does Greg Laidlaw. But this man is the X Factor out there so far this, this afternoon. It was the same last week with his counter-attack try against Ireland. He gets fortunate there, but the execution of the chip at full pace and his effort to get on the end, it gets his second try. Great to see some French offloading as well from their forwards. Um, playing some old-style French rugby, which we thought we'd never see again. So um, <laughs> some exciting play from them. And their confidence is high now. And Machado once again, a little bit breezy out there. That's his most straightforward kick so far. And Machineau on target once more, and the try of Teddy Thomas is a seven-pointer, and France lead by ten. Well, that's his eighth try, Teddy Thomas, and he just has that. He's getting space in the outside channel. Those are the most difficult tackles to make when he's out there, but he's just taking advantage of that space, his fast footwork and his skill level. Length of the restart, but uh, Marco Tolenia, the Bordeaux Begla, number eight, takes it well and carries it in. Use a nine! And Machino sends it high in front of the East Stand once again. Good take by Hogg, Kamara and Toma. Give him their attention. Turnover is good. 
Turnover is good, says John Lacey. Turnover once again. Possession lost by Scotland. Ball is available now. Camera shoves Hogg out the way and picks and goes himself. Maybe a counter turnover this time or penalty for Scotland. Body position up. Yeah, a lot of poaching going on. I, I think when the ball carrier carries, he probably needs to work on the floor a little bit more. Um, you know, a little twist, a little turn, place the ball a bit longer, make that poacher go off his feet. And then the uh, over ambition from the penalty. And we, we saw this last week from Finn Russell. I mean, as a forward, you get so excited about this opportunity here. You think you're going to be walking down into a, a drive for your six, seven meters yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. It's so deflating when you see it go dead like that. Yeah, that's the, when you're talking about on that side. He's too, he's, up, he's too ambitious, as Finn Russell. He can only get the line out in the five, but the wind comes off that east stand and blows it back in. But he's, he knows that, and he should be making sure. Keep those points. So it ends instead in a, a scrum for France back on their 10 meter line. Good view to look at the scrum here. These are the angles that are so interesting. In the, the front rows, Poirot down on a loose head for France Set. up against Simon Set. Bergen, Set. Slimani up against Gordon Reid. Okay, use it. The angle is a descending hey. one to the ground. France again, Passes and wide good. it goes. Is it forward? The crowd say yes. Bakatala says no. Chips and out it goes anyway. It's just we keep saying it, but that is not what we expected from France at all. A scrum deep in their own half. Where you'd imagine to be a contestable kick, they'll have, but they're trying a first phase move to attack that wide outside. Good ambition, good execution. That's where the play has been happening, pretty even in that, but Gilchrist takes it well on the line out, and Scotland get a chance to come again. Jones just has to check again the ball behind him, and Maitland tries to get something going from a standstill. Russell to Gilchrist on the charge into Rabas Slimani. Away, the ball is there. And Russell again to Simon Bergen, who's been useful in the in the loose so far. Bergen. Horn gives it out wide, and Jones to Seymour. Seymour flings it in a chance now, and Laidlaw can't quite take it. And then he looked to be held back a little bit as he tried to gather at the second attempt, but France send it long anyway. Russell then hurls it into Hogg and Stuart Hogg round the outside and tries to slip between and gives it on to Hamish Watson to Hugh Jones and Scotland flying up into the 22. Bergen plays scrum half to Gilchrist crashing forward again. Good hit by Dumeru and Gilchrist and then Bergen again in adding some drive forward and noise from the crowd and through goes Hugh Jones through the gap under the post try for Scotland and Hugh Jones does it again again he finishes but the whole team involved as soon as Scotland get that tempo into the game they're so difficult to deal with Hugh Jones had three big moments in there a wonderful offload out the back door and then they carried really well in the outside channels he stayed on that left hand side and just cut a clean superb angle of Greg Laidlaw to score an into the post the key to Scotland's attack is a tempo yeah, we saw at the line-out there, even with Johnny Lacey in the middle of the line-out, Scotland tried to go as quickly as they could, and we saw that in the autumn from them as well, trying to take quick tempo line-outs. I think the ball-carrying of the English, of the Scottish forwards, has been excellent. Hamish Watson, Gilchrist have done a great job carrying ball at the French and generating really, really quick ball as well. It's quite a scoring record Hugh Jones has, eight tries now in 13 caps, and the easiest of conversions for Greg Laidlaw brings Scotland to within three points. Chris, one of the things that's making it a great game to watch is both teams seem to really struggle to defend when the opposition go wide with the ball. And, that, and that's that's what we love as viewers, isn't it? There's that line again, just that delayed pass from Greg Laidlaw. Hugh Jones coming out, ten. we saw it with Robbie Henshaw yesterday as well, the defenders looking out, but you're right, both teams want to play today, the, the conditions are good. And with quick possession, it's just great to see that attack can come out on top of defence. I tell you, it's the slowest wander back to halfway for France to restart this game. Scotland in a, a sense of urgency. Boxes, it wasn't the prettiest kick, but it worked quite well. Difficult to take for Seymour and then Russell. I think 
that's the way Gregor Townsend wants to play. That's the way he wants Scotland to play. He wants them to play with pace. And it, is, it suits playing against the French team as well. I, I think they struggle when you up the pace and you take them through phases. Six man. It just meant that the, the French couldn't get their second person into the tackle. The initial tackle was okay, but the, the second body wasn't there in order to slow the ball down. Well, the last French lineout was pinched, but uh, this one taken down safely. Iturria and held at the back by their captain, the hooker Girado. Good mall going for France here, making ground. May well end in a penalty, but it's a good drive by France heading towards touch, which is Scotland's only friend at the moment. So France take it in field and then penalty to Scotland. Big moment for, for Scotland there. Gregor Townsend spoke that he was expecting a big set piece, scrum mall um, from France. Number 11. They went for a six plus one line out there, the French and the Scottish drove them towards the touchline, big tackle then, drove them back and got the penalty. And that, that is psychologically a big moment in any game. When you're expecting something like that and you deal with it as well as the Scottish did there, it's a big moment. Uh, Finn Russell finds the touch for this one. This is, huge. This is the offload out the back of the door. This was in the build-up to the, to the try. The turnover came, France kicked away their advantage. And eventually, Hugh Jones got his score under the post. Now the line-out just goes back to Scotland. Set back by Laidlaw to Gilchrist and Johnny Gray. And Gray into Ituria. And McAnally. Scotland getting on the front foot again. Horn and Lamara gets him back to halfway. Advantage, yeah. Gray and Gilchrist, Scottish advantage. Yeah, advantage. Penalty coming, so just try a shot no, to nothing advantage. here, perhaps. And it was nothing but back they come yeah, for agree, the Scottish nice. penalty and a chance to perhaps yeah. knock it into the corner kick again. The rock. That's, that's one of the 13. new rules. You can't kick the ball forward the ball out of a rock. rock. You can hook it back with your leg, but you can't kick it forward. And uh, Finn Russell has to get this right now. These are the. These are the moments that the pack get excited about. A ball going into the opposition 22, an opportunity to drive and take them on. Keep playing, now, then. if he were a cautious man, this would yeah. go in on the on sort of on the 22. And I think that's what he's gone for. Oh, Teddy Toma just about with the acrobatics. <laughs> it was a cracking effort, wasn't it? Teddy Thomas, is it a goal kicking, keeping gloves on there? It was a bit wobbly from Finn Russell, but it's exactly the outcome that Scotland are looking for. Now the noise inside Murrayfield struggle to be heard. Grant Gilchrist is taking over the line-out calling today. Six. See Craig Laidlaw there going back 10 metres, so they have a forward at scrum half, they'll probably drive. Yeah, so Hamish Watson in the scrum half position. McAnally goes to Gilchrist, but challenged and taken instead by Artur Ituria. And uh, Machineau keeps his captain. And France with a, an opportunity to clear in the final minutes in this first half. This entertaining first half. Stay there, stay there. And into the east stand it goes, and Scotland will have the line out again. Good line, good line out defence there from France. We saw some problems from Scotland last week against Wales in the line out, and they're repeating here again today. Disappointing to lose such a great attacking position. Grant Gilchrist was uh, making it clear that it's not always the hooker's fault. Of course, sometimes it's just not full extension in the lift or it's just slightly the wrong place. And uh, Wilson has to reach across to take that, but it works well for Scotland Sorry. now. Get going forward. One stop! One! And then the France defence is good, so yeah. Scotland through other options and through goes Maitland into the French 22. And uh, France will earn the penalty, the ball not coming back. Horn complains, but good work by Marco Tulenje. Yeah, Tulenje winning his turnover that time. Marchino looks to hurt his shoulder. He's a he's a combative scum half. Maxime Marchino. He throws everything he has into every contact. That was Maitland with a carry. Marchino with a tackle round the legs, and then Tulenje is he's got the right to the ball. He's in a good position there. I do think the Scottish ball carriers can probably do a little bit more work on the floor, Chris, when they carry. 
twist the turn, place it a little bit longer, make yeah. that poacher go off his feet, over his centre of gravity and off his feet. Just look at the try so far, Teddy Toma, again, very early in the game, again, poor defence perhaps, but Teddy Toma, so similar to the try scored in Paris. Yeah, those tackles on the outside channels are the most difficult to make because there's so much space. This is the, well, was Maitland's uh, try, Scotland's first, this is Teddy Thomas' second one, the lack of bounce. So unfortunate for Greg Lula, but Thomas is on absolute fire. This is the line cut from Hugh Jones. He could see it coming out to end the whole time. It was a delayed pass from Greg Laidlaw. That was after another long phase of play. And well, France are three points ahead, but it's been a cracking first half. Uh, Maxi Machino is fine. He's been treated there as Teddy Thomas, two tries. And what a talent he is. From that penalty. Yeah, touch is found. So a couple of minutes remaining in this first half. I say the, I say the only people who are not enjoying it are the defence coaches, but it has been very entertaining from a, a neutral point of view. And Gregor Townsend jotting down a few things to talk about at half time. And Girado and Kamara takes it down for France. Girardot holding at the back and uh, advantage to France so a penalty comes and arrives and an opportunity for France to finish this first half with another score if they can knock this into the corner yeah, that's right Wilson that's penalised and is also having words with Girardot the, the French who couldn't captain get your hand off his neck thank you this is what Scotland expected these uh, these drives six plus one line outs where the plus is a forward um, five plus one in Entry that case, and um, it's going to be very tough, you know, when, when, you, when you lose these big moments, the, the opposition Relax, get to kick yeah, you 30 okay. yards, 40 yards down the field, they're into their own 22 now, and the pressure is on. That's a good kick as well. But I think Yakuba Kamara, the French number seven, has had a really good opening half, a really good first half, he's been dynamic in his ball carries, he's offloaded, but he's a crucial man in the line out as well. So the sound of Murrayfield turns French once again for this final attack in the last moments of the first half. Girardo hits his target advantage as well, the man taken out in the air. Advantage! Damaina trying to get some power forward, so Boxes tries the free attack and Hugh Jones will be brought back, the penalty to France. Johnny Gray just bumps off the French jumper in the air. Penalty, penalty. Penalty on the 15 as well because uh, because of four, the infringement was in the lineup. I'll be looking at a kick a goal here in three points. Yeah, eventually, Maxi Machino comes forward and says he will take the the kick, and France will try and end with That's the three it. points. Sensible decision. Yeah, I think so. It's a, it, it, it's, it is a swirling wind here. There's a Tura up in the air and just getting bumped by Johnny Gray. It's a clear penalty from John Lacey. You could argue he's contesting for the ball, but you can't make any contact in there at all. And this is a big kick for Marshall. Frustrating thing here from a Scotland point of view By is 10, please. three penalties ago, one minute ago, it was possession for them on the French 22. And uh... The wind here will be coming right into Maxi Marshall's face here. He'll have to get a good strike. Last touch of the first half to Maxi Marshall. Well, all his kicks have been good so far in this first half. A great performance from Maxi Machino and stretches the French lead to six points. Two tries apiece in this very entertaining first half, but France lead by half a dozen at the break. Scotland 14, France 20. I want to talk to you about the restrictions we're all under because of coronavirus. Every single life is precious. So before we can think about lifting any of the restrictions, we must make sure we can do it safely. If we lift them too early, we risk overwhelming our NHS. You've been doing a great job of following the advice. You're saving lives every day, but it's vital you stick at it to slow the spread of the virus, protect our NHS, and keep more of our loved ones safe.
So I'm no longer playing for the Scottish national side, but thanks to BT and Scottish Rugby, I'm able to virtually rejoin Scotland national session during the Guinness Six Nations. Let's start with some basic attacking play. Oh, that's weird. It's good that I don't like heights, right? <laughs> Expect Hugh Jones to throw in a switch. That's very lifelike. It's a little bit unnerving to start with, and they and actually understand that you can look around and stuff, but it's. Yeah, it's a very, <laughs> very unusual experience, but really fascinating to be part of that. A rugby club is more than 15 players on the field. It's about a life better spent. A community mucking in together out of love for the local game. From kicking tees to cups of tea. Protecting the future of the game, making the stars of tomorrow. Royal Bank Rugby Force makes rugby life even better. We'll support over 75% of all qualifying clubs this season with tools, funding and expertise. Make sure your club is one of them. Bang! To apply, search Royal Bank Rugby Force and get started today. This is a really important message about coronavirus. To stop the virus spreading, we all need to continue to stay at home. If you do have to go out, it's really important that you stay two metres apart from others at all times. That's about six feet. Staying two metres apart reduces your chances of catching it or infecting others. By keeping your distance, you're protecting your community, Scotland's essential workers and our NHS. I think France will be looking at this now and saying they need to score the first points. If they score the first points, they're going over a try ahead and they're pulling away from Scotland. So Scotland, I imagine that they're speaking as players, the first thing they say is whether it's three points or a try, you've got to get on the scoreboard first. It's the most stunning afternoon in Scotland. Let's hope we get a stunning second half. Back to Andrew. Russell with the restart and uh, Marco Tolenia takes it. You might have seen Baptiste Senna. There he is at scrum half, replacing Maxi Machino and uh, Laurie. It's nice to get France out of the 22. Senna, very experienced scrum half. And Machino, the kicker as well for France. So we shall see what they do in that department. Uh, Senna, though, has played a couple of times against uh, Scotland before and played very well. And Scotland's lineup works well, but then the hit comes through from Laurie. gives it away to and Scotland and Gilchrist, hands it on to Gordon Reid and Bergen, the two props. Working hard. Off now, off, okay. Ryan Wilson, Scotland with the first chance to attack. Leave it! McAnally. Straight into Vamahina. Little switch from Russell to Gray. And uh, Ryan Wilson. Doing plenty of hard work in the carrying department. So to Bergen. He's a big man to stop. Leave it! Leave it! Leave it! France being told to leave it. Winces last Laurie, the culprit. And Russell just pops that pass in field. Johnny Gray. Scotland just pondering for a moment. Again, the French fans inside Murrayfield. Make a little bit of noise as Hamish Watson into Kamara. Hurled back by Vamaina. So Scotland battering away around this 10 metre line. McNally. Oh, 
Horn, around Slimani and Ituria Camara. Is the end of his journey. Okay. Hunter's good. Gilchrist. And Grant Gilchrist just punching aside Serra and lays it back for his second row partner, Johnny Gray. And now Scotland have some momentum, but uh, good work okay. there. I was going to say good work by France, but uh, then the penalty given to Scotland. And it was Baptiste Serra. Yeah, Camera was locked on on the post there, but the reason he was locked on is Serra had stopped the cleaners, the Scottish cleaners, from getting into the rook. And a little bit lucky, I'd say, there for Scotland. They, they deliver good ball off the top in the line out, but they were fairly ponderous then for eight, nine phases, a lot of one out runners. Grant Gilchrist has carried really, really well for Scotland. I don't know, Chris, would he have been picked for his ball carrying, but he, yeah. he has carried well. I'm, I'm sure he's picked for line out, but he's, he's worked hard when he's had ball in hand. He's a big, aggressive ball carrier, and he'll run good, honest, hard lines all day. The, um, Toulouse is probably a bit more dynamic, a bit more explosive. They both play for Edinburgh, but, but Grant Gilchrist is a he's a big, thick set, tight head lock who'll give you a huge work rate, and he's, as you say, he's carried well this afternoon. Heavier man, he was. Uh he was named as Vern Cotter's captain, then broke his arm in a series of injuries. But he's played well today, and Greg Laidlaw with the shot at goal. Laidlaw's a man who seldom misses in Scotland within three minutes after about three minutes of the second half. Good start for the home side. It's something we've seen from the French before. If you can hold on to the ball against them, they will give away penalties. They will be in dis indisciplined. So that's an important three points to start the second half for uh, Scotland. Last week we saw them concede six points straight after half time and virtually put the game beyond their reach. Yeah, a much more deliberate move back to the halfway line to restart by France and Boxis sends it long. And, uh, Ryan Wilson. Number eight gathers and goes straight into Girado. Good strength from Wilson. Laidlaw gives it to Bergen. He's had a, a good game around the park, Bergen. So too Hamish Watson. But the ball lost, but uh, stripped back illegally. So Scotland with a penalty and uh, France a couple of errors. Slimani complains to no avail and a chance for Scotland to move up the field. Yeah, that's exactly what we spoke about. I, I don't think any of that play was particularly spectacular by Scotland. I don't think France were under any pressure that they needed to give away that penalty. It's uh, just a missed touch. It was good work by Boxies to keep it in, but uh, Finn Russell stay, stay. has done it again. And it will have to come from a, a lot deeper now. Russell gives it to Hogg. And Hogg tries to use his pace, but there was some illegal blocking there of uh, French defenders. Hogg is frustrated, but it was quite clear. A bit of crossing, and France with a penalty. Yeah, I think it was Ryan Wilson engaged in the contact, wasn't it? I think if, if, if Ryan Wilson hadn't made any contact, I think he eventually pushed the French defender. Hogg would have been OK. This is something you talk about, Paul. You talk about error, compounding error. So Russell just missing touch from that penalty, and suddenly France with a penalty and a shot at goal. Yeah, I mean, they've been their own worst enemies here, you know, some ill discipline by France, where France actually give them a bit of a way out, and they just compounded, as we said, with a, a missed touch, and this silly penalty is probably a little bit unlucky, and France probably yeah. make a little bit of a meal of it, but, uh, you know, you, you just can't put yourself in the position to give those penalties away. Well, it's a kicking scrum half, and Serra replaces Maxime Machinot, so Baptiste Serra He's going to take this shot at goal from some distance, 42 metres or so, 44 in fact, on the angle. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, I thought Boxis would be next in line to kick, especially from range, but Saran is an accomplished goal kicker as well. Oh, that's a fine strike from Baptiste Saran. The wind is blowing around Murrayfield, but doesn't put him off to France, whether it's Machin or Serra. Perfect kicking record so far today, and a penalty apiece in the second half, and France have the lead back to six points. Yeah, I think Ryan Wilson, it was a pretty harsh penalty, actually, now we see it in the replay, but as you see, it's an error from Finn Russell initially, and then that just contact by head of the ball, allowing France the penalty. Vamaina had to do well there, he was not quite in the right position to be lifted there, but stretched and got it back, and uh, Wenceslas Lorry. 
stops, but now penalty from Number one four. side to the other, and Scotland will have a chance to hit straight back. Number four, tackling the man past the rock. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's one it's of the... Tackle past the rock. As you generally say, tackle past that. That's one of the, the things the referees have been asked to look out for. It's tackling players beyond the ball. Number four there. I think it was Peter Horn who was taken out. You see the penalties even now, four seven apiece. And it's been a tail of the second half so far. The penalties, Paul. Both well, teams eight, determined to help the opposition as much as they can. <laughs> and it's the kind of place where you just don't need to give away a penalty like that. I mean, France are always going to kick here to exit and, and, and clear their lines. Yeah, it was Stuart McInnes. Like, you see the tackle. It's almost what, three metres past the ball. There's a wrap of the arms. It's... Stuart McNair has been cleared already, there's no need to follow through with that. Yeah, I think once he had him out of the rock, he just needed to let him go. Once he's three metres beyond and he's still wrestling with him, trying to get onto the ground, the referees are very sharp on that now. So Laidlaw looking to make it four from four. Again, it's good, and Scotland moved to 20 points, so little in this game. It was try scoring on both sides in the first half. In the second half, it's a couple of penalties apiece. You're probably looking for your leaders, Paul, to step up here, isn't it? The game's obviously in the balance, only three points in it. And as you say, both teams are helping each other with the discipline. You need your leaders and your senior players to, to hit the game with the scruff of the neck here, I think. And Buxis must have placed this one quite well, but Gilchrist just clutches it from the air. Stay. Laidlaw staring down the French defence. McNally takes it forward. Laidlaw shapes to kick. And a challenge in the air. Fair contest, Geoffrey Pallis came forward for France, but it comes back on the Scottish side. And running onto it at pace now, Hogg and Hogg skipping his way around Lamara and past Toma and still going Stuart Hogg. And uh, Laidlaw dances in and feeds it out to Russell, and Russell just delays for a moment and then decides to set it back. Oh, and Hugh Jones trying to gather, spills French scrum. It's so frustrating to watch. In fairness, brilliant exit from Scotland where they won the aerial ball, and he came out here to Stuart Hogg, and you could see he was tempted. Hugh Jones just takes his eyes off the ball ever so slightly. But he came out yeah. here to Stuart Hogg, you can see he was tempted to offload yeah, once, twice. Thank you. But he decided to keep the ball in hand and do the sensible thing and put France under pressure. If you can play in their half, they will give you penalties. Just a shame to see him putting the ball down there, Scotland, and have to face another scrum now. It's not been a match of too many scrums. Scotland might be thankful for, but scrum stood up reasonably well last time. Serran ready to feed. A decent scrum by Scotland. Seran gets Buxis away and uh, Jeffrey Pallis straight to Hogg. And again, the buzz from the Murrayfield crowd gives it on to Seymour. Seymour into Seran and not held and still going. Not anymore. Scotland try and secure it, but a good counter rucking from France somehow pings back to Laidlaw and Johnny Gray gives it on to Russell and there is McNally again past Camara. And Scotland with pace now. Russell, oh, he times it well to Horn, but Horn, that's a great tackle by Ituria. Leave it! Leave it! Down the blind side they go, and Barkley and Wilson. Gilchrist shoves it on to Gray. Slow down, penalty, France. On the ball first. And it's Ituria getting the applause this time for his work. Yeah, Ituria, for, for such a big man, he's very good over the ball. He's like a, a number seven over the ball. Eh? I think that might be his second penalty, and he got a turnover as well. Uh, really, really good poachers. The skill you normally uh, associate with the shorter number sevens, the Hamish Watsons of this world, or, or the hookers, Gerardo on the French team is very good at it as well. We can play. Super play by the second row. Boxis for touch from the penalty, and France will have the line out.
with a few uh, tempers getting stretched out there. He's a little bit off the ball here. Stuart Hogg and Demiru. Of their own wee game on the touchline. Stuart Patterson, the physio, lends his way. France, though, with this good position and taken down by Camara well. Try and get them all going again. It goes to Girado at the back. One stop. It goes no further. Serra having a look, but then it uh, gets some momentum once again. And France making good ground at the mall. Use it! Serra and then the chip for the Wakatawa to chase, but uh, comfortably enough watched by Russell. Okay. Excellent ball defence there from Scotland. You can hear Johnny Lacey, the referee, shouting to the French, use it. Scotland have a full defensive line ready to go at him. No penalty conceded. Really good defence. It's Bernard Laporte in the, uh, in the centre. He's lost the boot. He's lost the boot. Just yeah, a sec. On your left here, Scottish rugby president, Rob Flockhart and Mark Dodson, chief executive. Who's that on the front row just walking across? <laughs> oh, no, though. Yeah, it's Finn Russell yeah, just getting his boot back on. It was an interesting kick from Serra. And it was just too heavy. It wasn't a bad option from that driving mall. Finn Russell got back to, to touch it down for a 22, but it was just a little bit too heavy from Saran, who's, who's been busy since he came on. On side 12. Obviously a good penalty kick. He's been industrious in defence as well. Quite a slight number nine, but hugely talented. His own man, uh, own man, own man. Bateria upended but by his own man. France though, come again, come on out. Once it's last Laurie, no. tries to set about no. Gordon Reid getting his hands in, but it's there for France again. Jeffrey Pallis comes in to play scrum half and books these to come And Pallis gathers at the second attempt into Bergen and Gray. And up to Ituria again. Booksy's a little pass to Vakatawa, so strong that the Gian on the wing coming in for work. And then the slick move doesn't work initially, but Tiddy Thomas is there to gather it up. And Gilchrist is clinging on for dear life. And France moving forward well now. And Palis into Wilson and Barkley. Vakatawa again. And the power of the winger meeting Johnny Gray. Set on to Buxis. And deep it goes through Thomas and on. Lamara finds support from Dumeru. And Dumeru into the 22. Four white shirts around him. Sets it back well, though. No. Set on again. Gives it to Ituria. And Scotland's defence being sorely tested once more. Jefferson Poirot, the loose head, makes a yard or two. No hands on! Slows for a moment and Senna looks at the options available. Forwards in a pod. Take it in, Ituria once more. Then to Rabba Slimani. Ball went out sideways but still there for France. Advantage to France as well after Ituria once more. Advantage to France, a free attack as Russell tries to make the tackle. Still playing with that penalty advantage and up to within 10 metres. Remy Lamagat. Forward still trying to make something of this. Sebastian Vamaina for France, and now a bit of pace on. There's Bakatawa once again, knocking down Russell, still holding on to that ball, but as a Laidlaw rips it, they'll come back for that penalty. Probably the, the only result, really, that Scotland could be happy with, because the penalty was always there. I thought the advantage was, was over, but uh, in fairness, I didn't take a massive advantage of it, but some good attack there from France on the right wing, and... Um, yeah. I was confident Scotland could defend that Up series of play there. We're looking at here from the high camera. Scotland or France don't seem to have great shape and attack. Sorry. And 
No. Scotland look quite organised in defence. I don't know that they need to give those penalties away. The, the, the defence is organised very well, isn't it? There's not a lot of room for, for France to attack. The, the Scottish players are getting up on their feet. What, what the, the damages and missed tackles, missed one-on-one -on -one tackles. But interesting, Vakatawa was involved two or three times here. Yeah, and he's okay. a dangerous player in and around the contact. Here's the penalty given away. We think there. Hands, hands in the rook. Yeah. Hands in the rook. Yeah, just pass the ball. But that was, that was more concerted pressure from the French. I thought... At one point, Boxes would maybe drop into the pocket to take the three, but they almost had that penalty advantage. There's the French coach, the team Jack Brunel in the back in the glasses, Sebastian Bruno in front of him, former hooker, who's the scrum coach alongside Julien Bonner, and uh, Jean Baptiste Delassalde is there as well, coaches the backs, and uh, the Marseillaise once more for Baptiste Serra. Changes about to be made for France as well, Picamol, and a couple of front rowers are about to come on. And they'll come on with a six-point lead for France as Serra knocks it through. And France once more half a dozen in front. Changes for both sides, in fact, because Scotland are going to bring on Ben Toulis in the second row and also uh, Jimmy Batty in the front row. You see the French uh, replacements there. And Louis Picamol is coming on in the back row and uh, Eddie Benaru in the front row along with uh, Sadat gomez Saba. There's Ben Toulis. And uh, coming on for Grant Gilchrist, and uh, Jimmy Batty is on for Gordon Reid. And there's Slimani going off, and uh, Tolenia as well. He's replaced by Picamol Tolenia. And a glimpse there of Jimmy Batty on for Gordon Reid. And straight into things, Louis Picamol. What a man to bring on. Lewis, as he's known in Edinburgh. Thank you. Serra, what height on that. Chased by Camara, taken well by Hogg. Leapt and plucked it from the sky and carried on Three, by three, Jamie Batty. Glasgow, loose head. Scotland flinging it wide and Hugh Jones. Good strength pass, Remy Lamara from Hugh Jones. He's made an extra 10 metres. Laidlaw complains. Advantage to Scotland as uh, Eddie Benaru gets over it, but it's Scotland's penalty coming. Keep the mark, Paul. Horn takes it in, and they know they have that advantage. And the long advantage played for France last time as Maitland keeps it alive. Release seven. Got to keep checking as a player if the advantage is still alive. It's Ryan Wilson. Still advantage. There it is. John Lacey makes it clear. Scotland still have the penalty coming. Stay there. Stay. And Scotland making good ground through Russell. Laidlaw feeds down the blind side and Horn into the French wall. And that might be the end of it. No, still with Scotland and still advantage. And Toulis into the 22. But well, they will come back for that penalty now. No advantage. Yeah, I think Scotland will be happy to take that advantage. Once you get there, into no advantage you, okay? those higher phases, you struggle to I'll attack. I'll it's, you struggle for energy, particularly at this stage of the game. You know, a penalty in that position in such a tight game, yeah. they'd be glad of it. No, no more, yeah, no more hands up in the, the air, no. <laughs> Just a, a sight of hands out for advantage. Look at me if you want. <laughs> Louis Picamol there, I mean, he sort of fell out of favour in terms of selection with uh, Jacques Brunel and he only gets in because Kevin Gourdon is injured, so Tolenia started, but Picamol on the wasn't, bench, but again, a tremendous he? player. Yeah, he's a big impact player. I, I wouldn't call him a relentless player, that's the only problem I would say. He, he has big, big moments and then he can go missing for periods of the game. Whereas other players probably don't offer you as big, as big moments, but they keep showing up defensively and in attack. Greg Laidlaw's last three kicks have all been from pretty much this position as we head into the final quarter of the match. And the game's still so, so close. It'll be three points into that final quarter. It's funny there at the rock. I mean, Johnny Lacey, I know he's speaking English, but he's quite clear speaking to the French, telling them to leave go of the ball. And, uh, and that's good, that's good, Paul, because even in that phase there, you know, Scotland were able to attack much better, much more fluently when the ball was quick. It definitely suits them. The French know that. They're always going to put a lot of pressure on the breakdown, but it must be legal. 
Now, what a 20 minutes we have. Who has the deeper squad? Who has the greater fitness? Ryan Wilson takes the restart and carries it in. Both these sides so desperate for a victory. Stop no whites. Hold one. France no win in seven. And uh, Scotland off the back of that heavy defeat in Cardiff. And Louis Picamol now. Full speed ahead. Half, half, no. And Sedan. Is it to book season on to Palis and uh, Vakatawa once more? And not taken down in the first attempt, so into Hamish Watson he goes. And Hamish Watson wins 1 0. Still with France though, and Sedan. Little blind pass and risky and off the feet of Picamol or a bit of a hand in there as well. That was a risky from France and gives Scotland the scrum right in the centre of field. I know we want to see France playing that kind of rugby offloading, but they will give you opportunities. They will do this kind of stuff where they'll give away penalties, where they'll throw the ball, they'll throw silly offloads and put each other under pressure. If Scotland can just remain disciplined whenever they get the ball. The good thing about that from a Scottish perspective is the defence kept coming up on the outside. Sometimes if you see that the ball going to deck, you can sit off on the outside and the ball, you know, doesn't get put under pressure further out. Picamol will look for, he'll have a bigger impact than that to come. It was a hard one for him to pick up. Well, we've got three different men in the front rows now, two different props for France and uh, one for Scotland and Jimmy Batty on the loose head. How will that change the dynamic of the scrum? It's pretty even so far. Scotland just moving Fantastic. forward a little bit and they have the penalty so again a free attack Laidlaw just sticks it through for the chase and they'll come back for that penalty both of these props for France got their first catch last week police and Gomez against Ireland they're fairly inexperienced they're big men obviously powerful scrummagers that's a massive penalty for Scotland though and it will be a shot at goal, it's a little bit further out, but it's again right in the centre of field and it will be a chance for Scotland to draw level. Such a tense match now. You see all the... You have all the sort of free-flowing, entertaining stuff of the first half and then people start to realise that it matters quite a bit well, now. That's just what I was going to say, it almost looks like a, a first half we're seeing now in the second half and that's down to the tension, the pressure. Scotland needing to win after last week, obviously. And as you say, France winless in seven, they've only won five at the last 20 games. 14 losses and a draw, so the nerves and the pressure, especially in the condensed format of the Six Nations, kick in at this point. And it's a championship minutes. And to be honest, I think careful, the fatigue's careful, telling please. on France a little bit. The penalty count's going against them now. Let's see if Scotland can capitalise. He really fails, and Laidlaw brings Scotland level. 16 minutes to go at Murrayfield. Not a thing in it between Scotland and France. I really feel Scotland have a great opportunity now. They just have to be solid. Their set piece has to be solid. Their scrum, their line up. When they're in their own half, they have to get out sensibly and, and don't play the ball too much. France will give them opportunities. If they can get hold of the ball in the French half, France will give up penalties and turnover. Well, Scotland have made a change. Uh, Finn Russell coming off, John Barclay coming off, so I'd imagine Peter Horn is going to fly one. half. Can't believe it! And the Ali Price is on, so uh, Laidlaw will. Well, he can play fly half. Indeed, most of his early caps can fly half. Oh, knock on from both seats. Oh, the frustration from him. A howl to the Murrayfield evening. And Lionel Boxis. And his mistake met with a roar, well, from himself and from the Murrayfield crowd as well. Yeah, he knows. He knows, doesn't he? It's never nice to see anyone. He knows what he's been well. He's played well. He's played a different game to what I'd imagine, but that's a basic error. And that's a pressure building again in the last quarter of this match. Just talking about the change though at fly half, because 11 of Greg Laidlaw's first 13 caps actually came at fly half. So you've got Ali Price now at scrum half. Greg Laidlaw at fly half, though. He has a lot of control there. Uh, Greg, it's maybe a, a nod towards what Paul's saying, getting territory, getting the French territory, win penalties, con convert those penalties and apply the pressure. And secure from the scrum, and so Price feeds onto Horn and Laidlaw on the wraparound, and now an opportunity, Hogg off the outside of the boot in Maitland, and it's, uh, the mark is called by Dumeru, and perhaps not the right option as uh, Dumeru now comes away, possession given up by Scotland. Leave it, leave it, though. And uh, Sedan 
Again, looking to feed back, but under pressure, Bogsis now, oh, he slips it away, and Pallis feels the thump and gets that kick away, but only as far as Ryan Wilson. And France now beginning to unravel a little bit. Price looks for it and feeds it on to Toulis. And driving forward on the back of a wave of noise, and Denton is on the field as well, carrying Scotland up to within 15 metres. Crash ball again, it's Jones trying to pick that line, but France read him this time and bring him down. Carried in by McAnally this time. France trying to hold him up and they may have done well here. He cried the crowd, but France, I think, will get the scrum. They do good work by the French defence. Well, the French turned that tackle into a maul. So they don't have to release when it goes to the ground, so scrum to France. But Scotland here don't have to pull a rabbit out of the hat at all. Uh, France are going to do it for them. <laughs> well, Boxy says, showed us what it's all about, didn't he? And one of the things you spoke about before the game, this is really good discipline pressure on their exit here. <laughs> You've got to giggle. His, his previous touch to that was a, was a knock-on that he should never have knocked on, and then he juggled the first one and then thought about, well, I've just juggled this, I've knocked on the previous one, I'll just throw it in the back door, two metres from one line. See, Lionel, Lionel, just, all sorts of pressure. Take it easy, Lionel, yeah? <laughs> Simple things, yes? Anyway, the crowd are enjoying it, and we have a, an all-tied-up game, 13 minutes to go. Great drama at Murrayfield. One of the things we were worried about from a Scotland point of view was the scrum, um, and the substitutions, I think, have... It's, it's been good all day, but the substitutions have probably worked in their favour as well now. And they just have to be very simple here. They don't need to go for a penalty off the scrum. They don't need to get offside around the back of the scrum. Just some disciplined exit pressure. Actually, David Denton, who came on rather unannounced, uh, back in the side for the first time in a couple of years, and he made a big hit on, uh, was it Serran feeding it back? So that led to the mistake from Volksis, and Denton brings a, a certain amount of power and dynamism to the Scottish side. He had a big carry in there as well, didn't he? Especially when the tired French defenders are getting a bit loose, he'll go hard. Yeah, I think with Gilchrist gone off, he's a, he's a good addition to carry ball. Well, it's French ball, at six, seven metres from their own line, and Serran, incredible feed. Picked up by Picamol into Hamish Watson. Oh, release, Evan. And again, just that extra five or six yards he's bought there for the clearing kick. Stop, from stop, that stop, man, Boxis. But he does have a big boot, and that is a wonderful clearing kick from Lionel Boxis. <laughs> what a kick under pressure. On his own line, Picamol did well, didn't he? A clean strike off the back there, Little off the back of the scrum. I thought the French maybe went off their feet there, but that's on his own goal line, under all sorts of pressure. And it's gotten the way already. Quickly taken. And Scotland doing just the right thing and not giving France time. Oh, no. France Captain looking to slow no. things down oh, now. Go. Price gives it into Denton. Oh, man bun in flight. And Scotland still making ground and Price. Oh. And Toulis. And Scotland getting back to where they were. Stay. McAnally. And Denton. Again, as Paul was saying, go through the phases and perhaps wait for something to be given to you. Hamish Watson. Price. Denton on his shoulder, but just waits. And then off goes to Hugh Jones. And off oh, Hugh Jones away again. Again, just driving into the 22. Denton feeds out to Ryan Wilson. Back to Johnny Gray. The French players breathing hard in defence now. Scotland trying to get that ball back. And it is still there for them. Price gives it on. Carried in by Batty. Set back by the loose head and a bit of width on it now okay. from Scotland. Okay. Taken behind, Seymour advantage, says John Lacey. Penalty oh. coming to Scotland, they want more than three points now. Bergen, they will take that penalty, but they're getting closer. Jamie Batty hurling himself up over Gomez Sa, and they'll come back for that penalty now. It's just pressure building, isn't it, Paul, from the Scots? And it almost looks as if the They're French are size. playing as individuals. They're defending as individuals. They've got huure commitment, huge character, but they're, they're working on their own. They're not working within the structure. Yeah, one thing you, you don't want to show is, is show any weakness. We've an awful lot of French players here with their hands on their knees, bent over. Not many of them talking to each other, encouraging each other and communicating to each other. And, and I, you know, I know we're banging the same drum here, but they, they will give you opportunities. This is the quick line-outs. 
that Scotland have been doing. They did them in the autumn. They didn't let get the opposition get set. They just played them as quick as they can. A very simple play. Peter Horn just puts his head down, his head down and goes. That was the offside, offside, which gave away the penalty. Now, with 10 minutes to go, Gregor Townsend still busying himself, but uh, Greg Laidlaw with a chance to move okay. Scotland in front for the first time in this match. It's not an easy one, but through it goes, and Scotland are in front. 70 minutes it's taken them, but they lead at Murrayfield. You just can't beat having a kicker like that in your team. When, when, when the French are going to give you opportunities, when they're going to give you penalties, if you're someone that can knock them over, seven out of seven, I think he is now, it's massive for a team. You know, we wondered with Finn Russell kicking at over 90%, when he takes the kicks, so we did wonder if uh, Laidlaw would take it over, but he is so reliable. There's a change made at fly half now for uh, France, and Anthony Bello is on. Uh, the restart's important, but plenty of time for Maitland to carry it in. And there is Denton again. Keep moving. And Sebastian Varmahina has been replaced in the second row by Paul Gabriag. Stop, stop. Yeah. And the kick, well, nobody there to take it. Serran then pats it back to Picamol. And so France looking to build a position. Serran feeds Bello. And a foul is on as well, Benjamin Fowl. A little bit of a spill, but uh, did it go forward? Yes, it did, says the referee, but Scotland have it anyway. A good pick-up by Hogg from his feet. He got a scrum advantage, okay, so he no sees uh, Hogg wandering around and sees no advantage there. And Scotland scrum. Good defence from Scotland, just coming up. As you said, Chris, keep, they keep coming, keep coming forward and pressure their skill set. Yeah, Poor Benjamin pass by Fall. Yeah. Palace, just under pressure from, from Hugh Jones. It's there. Thereafter, the, the difficult thing is Stuart Hogg didn't want to kick because as soon as you kick, you kick away your, your, your knock on advantage, your scrum advantage. So, quite sensible play there as well. You don't want to invite any counter attack opportunity for the French, especially as you say, Paul, that the scrum has, has improved. Certainly, it, it's been strong most of the day, but it's certainly a good position at the moment for Scotland. Yeah, that's really clever play from Hogg to, to not lose the advantage for the team with the kick. Scrum again, okay, we're pre not yet. We're pre we're pre engaged. The clock ticks away, and Scotland are Both certainly teams. not safe Both yet. Teams. But they have the, the momentum with them. Both teams pre engaging there at the scrum, so we'll just reset. And again, lots of different personnel, but France would have expected to have the edge in the scrum. They certainly haven't had that today. It's been pretty even. Coach! No, there it goes, it. just use it, says John Lacey, so it's held at the back by Ryan Wilson, then feeds Ali Price and Horn now. And Denton again, uh, Wenceslas Lorry flying up there. Oh. Taken in by Batty. Good okay. hit from uh, Gomez Sa. And Horn to halfway. No, France defence no. keeping Scotland back and it pings out sideways, but yeah. again the illegal manoeuvre from France and penalty to Scotland and France are just making this easier for Scotland no, now. It's it's sensible attack from Scotland, well managed again, isn't it? Not trying too much they're keeping it fairly close in the wide channels as well so if there are any turnovers that they're easily snuffed out but it's just a mature end to the game so far from Scotland Paul yeah I'm sure knowing Gregor Townsend he'd love to be he'd love them to be playing far more free-flowing rugby but sometimes you just got to play with some fronty and take the opportunities that the opposition are giving you super kicks Stuart Hogg well Hogg finds touch and finds it deep inside the French 22 and now you start to think about minutes to go rather than minutes past. 
that Scotland can take a big step towards victory here if they can find another score. It's a really interesting start there, second half. Uh, penalties conceded seven by France. I think that's linked to the fatigue and it's hurting them at the moment. McAnally goes to Ben Tullis. Ben Tullis and Denton there, a couple of hairstyles leading the way for Scotland. One stop, one stop. And it's held at the back by Stuart McAnally, the hooker, and Scotland are beginning to creep forward. And again, with every inch gain, the noise will grow Use inside Murrayfield, but France it. reset that defence. Use it, they're told by John Lacey. So Denton comes away into Jakuba Kamara. Price digs a penalty advantage to Scotland and uh, no time for the advantage. The penalty immediately arrives. You could say it was difficult for him to get out of there, but if you put yourself there in the first place, you put yourself at risk of the penalty. It's good work from Denton, wasn't it? As you hear Mish Watson, he always gives everything he's got and involved in absolutely everything. There's a wee conversation between Greg Laidlaw and Stuart Hawk there. I think they're just eating up a vital few seconds, there's no other decision but to take the opportunity to kick the three, but Dave Denton did well coming off the back of that mall to, to buy himself time. What you spoke about Good in the first half was Paul was working a little bit harder in contact on the ground so the, the French players couldn't get in and over the ball. Yeah, sometimes you'd be isolated. It, it, it happens several times in a rugby match and you have to, you have to find a solution and buy some time for the guys that are coming to help at the, at the break time. But it was also good play by Denton because the mall got a bit messy, the referee had called use it, and they were in danger of being turned over. So Denton just took it on himself, took off, took it off the back, and the best thing they could have is, is ideally you'd love to get a penalty off that mall, but at least they have the ball still have the ball and they're five, six meters from the Scot from the French line. Once again, all eyes turn to Greg Laidlaw. Well, all those tries in the first half, four of them, and it's all been penalties in the second, and there have been six from the boot of Greg Laidlaw, and now Scotland lead by six points at Murrayfield. Yeah, it's been a nervous second half for both teams, but Scotland have settled down into it. They've just, they've figured out that France are going to give them plenty of opportunities, provided they can play in their own half. Good kick at the restart, though, for France, and even contest, it comes back Scotland's way eventually, and uh, Horn carries it in. It was like a sevens restart that, just hanging on the 10 metre line. Let it go, let it go! Price complains, but the ball is there for the scrum half now, and he's going to kick himself. And Jeffrey Pally, so a wonderful take by the fullback, and then just a stumble and trying to gallop into the open spaces. Three minutes to go. Still. An opportunity for France, no doubt about that, as Serran looks for it again. Toulouse trying to free himself, advantage. Same. Penalty is there as Picamol carries it in. Advantage! So France with the advantage, knowing no. they might be sticking this into the corner, but they have this attack, and Doumerou, the centre, takes it in. Then Picamol. Still advantage, and as Scotland get hands on it, they'll come back for it. So, yeah. just over two minutes remaining, six points the difference, and Point an opportunity for Bello to stick it in the corner. Roll away. Identical penalty to cameras down on the post there. Denton, I think it was. Some poor tackle technique, put him on the wrong side. He did everything he could to get out of there, but yeah, yeah. probably been held in a little bit. Well, a lot right, still to decide in this match, but man of the match is... Well, this evening, I think, to be honest, it's that man in the screen, it's great laid law. He's won past 600 points for his country. He's kicked eight away, he's taken over the captaincy. He's moved from 9 to 10, he's controlled his team. He's been the linchpin that Scotland go on to this victory. Teddy Thomas, outstanding two tries. Now West man of the match, Greg Laidlaw. The next moments will decide whether he is man of the match on a winning side as France take it down and pick them all. One stop, one! At the heart of things there. Brought down, brought down by Blue. Brought down by Blue, so France have taken it down. No penalty there, and Scotland have the strong, great defensive work by the home side. And just over a minute to go, a minute to see out for victory over France. The way Scotland were set up defensively in that line-out, France had to win it at the front. It's probably the easiest ball in terms of all defence. It's the easiest one to win. Louis Pickamore goes up at the front here. You can see all the Scottish players from behind. Stuart McAnally does a great role here. The white number two does a great role to, to stop them all as well. 
Time off. Absolutely huge moment. There's just a lot Frost of guts and courage in that as well. All the technical stuff, Paul, but you know more than anyone that's about working hard, isn't yeah, it? It's a combination of both. It's making them win the line out at the front, and then and then it's a, it's a mindset. It's about getting their head down, pushing, working hard. And now Scotland will try, try to see out this clock. France so desperate for a win in the, their wilderness today. And for a long time it looked as if they might, and they have to put everything into this scrum now, France, to try and challenge Scottish ball. Ali Price... Stay back, stay back. And Scotland not yielding yet, but now they crumble. Ball what is the decision? Ball is out, picked up by Ryan Wilson for Scotland. Seconds remaining, they can't yet kick it out. Carries from the forwards. France try and turn it over. Penalty to Scotland, and the win will be theirs. The clock goes red, and it is time to see it out, says Greg Laidlaw. Asks the question, the fans already celebrating. You have to tap this first, Andrew. You have to tap the ball first before they kick it out. Kick it out, and it's well, you can ask the question of the referee. No need for the line out. The victory goes to Scotland, and some wins are open and entertaining. And try scoring it was in the first half, but in the second half, this was a win of character for Scotland to come back from that thumping in Cardiff, and they have their first win in the Six Nations. Yeah, much needed, wasn't it? An excellent win. It was almost back to front, all the glamour in the first half, but that man you're screaming, Greg Laidlaw, is a man of the match, managed to side when it got tense just after the break. It was all penalties in the second half.